Hello 3D artist. I'm Luca De Rio, I'm the developer of Real PBR, Real HDR and Real AS. And today I would like to show you this new project I'm working on, Real PBR. Uh, honestly, it's not so new anymore. I already disclosed it uh, um, in the previous month with some videos and recording where you saw probably some uh, uh, product like an automotive uh, and uh, our swatch. So today I would like to show you some uh, improvement I made on this tool and um, first of all uh, I'm going to start by importing a 3D object. Now this is not a 3D object that you may encounter in a real production. It's a pretty heavy FBX file, it's uh, overall 4.5 million polygons subdivided in four single objects. So in a uh, professional scenario probably you are going to work with multiple objects and multiple details with a lesser amount of polygon each, uh, but uh, all in all yeah probably you are going to reach one, two or three million polygon. So I start by creating here where I can work with my 3D uh, primitives and where I can import a 3D file. And here I have my Studio Donto Tecnico FBX, it's in Italian language, and it's a dentist studio. So I decided to start with something uh, positive. And uh, here in this process, I'm parsing the data from the file. So I'm practically I'm reading all the content inside the FBX file and I'm uh, creating all the vertices, all the edges, all the polygon, all the normals, all the smoothing group, all the um, UV mapping coordinates and so on. So at the moment I'm not in, uh, supporting the import of light, cameras, bones, uh, skinning and animation. Probably that uh, uh, will happen in the future, it's already in my to-do list, uh, but I don't have a uh, a timing for that. So after the importing process we have our 3D object with this uh, texture applied. This is a welcome texture where you can see the size of your tiling, the size of your uh, well actually your UV mapping and you can find some issues in your UV maps. So practically this is my checkerboard where you can see if something went wrong during the modeling phase. Now if something went wrong in the modeling phase and you want to change the UV map please do so by working your 3D program like Blender, 3ds Max, Maya and so on. Uh, Real PBR is my tool to uh, give you an extra um, an extra option, an extra tool actually, to make your renders and to export your visualization. Everything happens in real time, so you see that when I'm moving here the mouse I can see my selection and as I told you my scene is composed by four objects. They are still Italian names but uh, it doesn't matter so much and this is what I was referring you when I told you that probably in your production scene this won't happen because you will have different and separated objects. So, uh, well, in here we can hide the object, we can isolate the element. Let me jump directly to the material editor where I, I can instantiate a material because what you see here is not the working material, it's just the welcome material, as I told you, for the issues in the UV map and the checker map. So, as first step, I'm going to select one object and I collected here the information about the select object, I click on plus and boom, the material is instantiated. So at the moment I can clear it, if I want I can change the color of my object, I can change the metalness, or the roughness, so there are a few stuff that can be changed. I can also assign the same material to the various objects and here we go. So here we have the scene. For the outdoor you notice earlier my background made with environment, with uh, where uh, I can I can change the map and those two maps are made by Real HDR that is uh, my other tool that can be linked dynamically to Real Real PBR excuse me and is where you can define your environment by using an HDRI um, solution for image based uh, lighting. So this is not the case we want to uh, to use uh, this so I'm going to the welcoming sky here and it won't be used in the render for the environment. Um, second, we have the camera options um, where we can define multiple parameters. For today, I'm just going to use the focal length and the degrees. Um, if you want to see <coughs> all the other set 
settings, excuse me, in action, I invite you to watch another video that I'm going to add here in the comments. So while you are there, uh, maybe if you like uh, it and you want to, to smash the like button, this is going to be very appreciated. And if you want to subscribe to stay updated with other news on, on this method. So what is new and what you never saw before in my real PBR is the light. So the light editor is a new panel I'm working uh, on and is where we can, uh, by clicking plus, uh, boom, we can instantiate one light in our scene. At the moment, we have um, an, a light ID. In the future, I'm going to add here some field where you can uh, customize the name. We can add the lumens. Uh, by default, the lumens is 500. That should be enough for this room. Uh, while you see that everything is super bright because uh, this, uh, the camera is overexposed. So um, I should um, change the setting inside the camera uh, later. At the moment, I'm just going to work here on the light since this is the new part of the software that I want to show you guys. So the intensity, the color, and the size can be defined here, while the position is going to be defined directly in the viewport. As it happened with real HDR, um, the scene is divided. So on the left, you have the camera view, and on the right, you have the light view. So wherever I'm going with the light, you can see the update. Eventually, you can see the light panel. So this is... Uh, me, uh, it's like having a multiplayer video game, you know, where you move in uh, in one part of the game in in a client and the server is uh, showing what is going on there. And probably in future version, I will add also a gizmo here for the camera, so we know what where we are looking from. So for the light, well, here. Uh, this is part of your job, uh, so it's part where you create the artistic um, mood of the scene that you are showcasing. Here, I just leave the light here, I click on done, and boom, I'm back to my camera and I have my light in place. Um, what you see here is the real-time pre-visualization of the object. So let me remove temporarily this option where I can see my my material, the, you know, this orange glow on the material, the pink glow on the material, excuse me. And uh, this should be fine. Okay. So here is easier for us to see the light without having that uh, uh, pink glow happening all the time. So what is new in Real PBR? Well, the light, as I, as I just showed you, and uh, hold on, the render panel. So now here, um, the render settings are a little bit a delusion, I'm sure, for you, because uh, there are not so many settings. Actually, we have just the resolution for the output of our image. We can turn on the ray trace. That is where the magic is going on. And I invite you to, um, to wait a few minutes and it will have a wow effect, hopefully. And the render button that will start the rendering process with the anti-aliasing and the subsampling. So if you are ready, I'm going to click here on ray trace. Three, two, one, ray trace, please. Boom. And here is uh, part of the, of the magic of what I'm working on. So here the light is sampled inside our scene. So we don't have anymore the real-time effect that uh, uh, is, is not bad at all. I apologize for this uh, shadow happening here and for some flipped um, uh, normals here, but when I turn on, boom, the light trace, we have a different lighting solution. So back to the light, I can turn it on and I can change the intensity where 50 probably is too much. I was sure that I used the uh, smallest number. Let me use 15. Well, now 15. Lumens is hilarious for an interior, but as I told you, the camera is overexposed, so we have a scene that is brighter than what it is. And uh, yeah, this is the render going on. Again, I apologize for the flipped normal that they result in a, in a total uh, dark um, sort of vacuum uh, space. And also the same problem happens inside the trash bin. And... Um, well, there is not such a big solution for this because uh, if you don't have the normal in your 3D object for real PBR, it's, uh, it's a pain to 
to reconstruct them and to have a fine, to find a way to 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 visualize them practically we don't have material to render and we don't have a surface so you see that the render is going on now very quickly before finishing let me show you how we work with multiple lights so in this situation i open my light panel i can create once again on the plus my new light is very powerful so let me use 10 this time and I can move my light somewhere in the scene so I can have a sort of two light setup like so. I'm not going to change the size of the light. I leave this for, uh, and as well as the temperature, I leave those settings for another video. I just want to increase a little bit the intensity of my initial light. And uh, I have the bad feeling that I'm going to overexpose the the back of the chair here so just a small tweak on the camera so I can step backward usually I like to zoom in in my scene so I like to step backward with my camera I have a limit that is defined by by the by the walls and okay now I'm going to shut up and I let real PBR render the scene for me And I thank you for watching. See you next time.